victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. But we are living in interesting times. Amen. We are living in times where none of what we thought is sure is sure. We are living in times where what we were so certain will always be has been disrupted. But we are thankful to God that his word remains the same. Him in his authority as God, he remains the same. And today he's inviting us to recognize that. He's inviting us to actually see him and to see that he sees us. Hallelujah. Amen. I need those amens to be just a tad bit louder. Amen. Amen. As we turn to the book of 1 John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. All things were made through him and through him, and without him nothing was made. That was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. In another version it says it was the light of humanity. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that through him, that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Verse 10, he was in the world, and the, word, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came in his own, to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him and welcomed him, to them he gave the right, the authority to become the children of God, those who believe in his name. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the reading of your word. We open our hearts to receive it, and we thank you, Lord God, that you watch your word to perform it, and it will not return to you void. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of us have watched uh, the movie Avatar? In that movie, there's something I particularly uh, like about it, is that their greetings are not eh, molo, saubona, hey. How do they greet? They say, I see you, amen. And it's almost a validation, seeing not just the, the, the appearance of a person, whether they're looking good or not good, but it's seeing the soul. It's recognizing what is spiritual, what is life, what is eternity in the person, amen. So um, we see here in the Bible where it's describing the entrance or the first story of who Jesus is. He was in the beginning. He was before all things and in him all things were made. But somewhere, somehow, if you go to verse 10, it describes that though the people he created, though the world he created, the world did not recognize him. Meaning the world did not see him. When the world saw him, it saw an ordinary man. Although the people were waiting for a savior, they were waiting for the one, they were waiting for the Christ, the one who was to come and liberate them. But when he came, he did not come in the way they expected him to be. And therefore they could not see the savior. So as we were praying and preparing for the service, one of the things that God has been emphasizing is that even in the midst of calamity, trouble that is happening in the world, I hope and pray that you will see me. You will see what I am to you. You will recognize me as God. And therefore, there is a promise that we see here that to the many that decided to recognize him, to the many that decided to see him, there is a giving that was bestowed to him. And that was a right to become the children of God. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to also quickly just turn our Bibles to Matthew 16. And Umfundis has been preaching a lot about this, this particular piece of scripture. And in this and in the scripture, if we go to verse 15, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, asking them. He first asked people say I am they're like they called Elijah and all the other people and he's like okay guys I need to know who, who who do you who do you as my friends as the people I walk with as the people are close to my heart as my people in the midst of a city that recognizes other gods in a place where if you go a few verses up Jesus was asked by the Pharisees to show them a sign of heaven and he says to these guys, you, can ab you are able to tell the weather. You are able to determine Buti, how the day is going to go. But somewhere, somehow, you cannot tell the signs of the times we are living in. And, and therefore, Jesus is, is surrounded by people who are doubting who he is. And then he comes to his own. And he's like, guys, I need to actually check this out. Who do you say I am? When there is trouble in the world, when there is a virus going around, wait, I'm looking for the body of Christ, the people I call my own, my chosen people, the royal priesthood, and I want to know, who do you say I am? What is your confession when the world is saying, that thing we said 2020 is gone? We were misled about 2020, we are in Monogau 2019. When the world is saying that I am, I, I don't know where to go, everything is not going right in my life. You, being a child of God, a representative of the body of Christ, carrying the promises of God, who do you say he is? This morning, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to know if, if in the midst of everything surrounding you, do you see him? The great thing that Peter does right in that instance, he, he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And right there, Jesus is like, whoa, Simon, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but the father above. Hallelujah. Meaning the revelation of Christ in our lives is revealed by the Lord. Then we join in with the many that have received him. And therefore, what is this right that the children of God have, have received? I want us to quickly go to the book of, of Luke chapter 7. And show another story of another person who was in, fa in facing trials. Asked, are you really the guy? Hallelujah. We know of, the, of John the Baptist and his ministry him baptizing people before he before jesus started his ministry shouting in the desert that hey guys watch out he's coming repent the kingdom of god is nigh." amen in verse 18 it says then the disciples of john reported to him so here john is in prison and he sends his disciples to go and ask jesus and then the disciples reported to him concerning these things and john calling Two of his disciples to him sent them to Jesus saying, are you, are you the coming one or do we need to look for another? Now we need to take a step back. John is not just uh, any, any Mzalwana that just got born again last week. John is the cousin of Jesus. John is his brother. John, John grew up with Jesus. John knows this person. But when he's facing imprisonment, when he's facing something he never thought he would face when Jesus is with him, he asked, I, 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 are, you, are you the one? Or should, should I remove my expectation, my hope, my trust and place it on another? And the question is, at how many times have we faced trials and tribulations and forget what we've always known about God? and forget the truths of his word and forget the promises he's made to us and that at the point of calamity at the point of tribulation we tend to ask did he really say that are his promises really a yes and a, a, an amen in my life he says are you the one who is to come the chosen one or should i or should we wait for another i love I love what Jesus does. It says here 
in verse 20 when the men had come to him they said john the baptist has sent us to you saying are you the coming one or do we need to look for another and that very hour look at what jesus does at that very hour he cured many of infirmities afflictions evil spirits and and, and to many blind he gave sight so this is what jesus does He's, uh, okay I hear what you're saying let's let's get to work because the word of God is not just word the works of God are not just word but they are power God is not just saying to us he is God but he is ready to demonstrate his power in our lives hallelujah he does not answer him and he's not even offended by that question from his brother and his cousin hallelujah and 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 in 22 he says Jesus answered and said to them go tell Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard. That the blind see. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. The poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My prayer this morning is that we may not be offended by the trials that we have. We may not be offended that Corona has come even to South Africa. Instead, we may see him. So when you see him, he gives you the right to be the child of God. But as you see him, you actually see the demonstration of miracles. You see those who are sick being healed. You see the lame walking. You see the lepers being healed. You see the blind eyes being opened. The entrance of his word comes to destroy the walls of religion, to destroy our eyes being closed to seeing what God is doing. I pray this morning that although we are living in trying times, in uncertain times, we may be assured that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, and he is he is ready to demonstrate what he has said he is. He's ready to open the blind eyes. He's able to answer your matters this morning. And I want us to pray if we can stand where you are. You can just prepare your heart to receive this prayer. I want us to pray this morning for people who have lost their hope in the face of trials and tribulations. One of the things that Jesus doesn't do, he doesn't say, I'm going to remove the tribulation. He doesn't say, I'm going to take you out of it. But be of good cheer, he says in John 16, 33. Be of good cheer in this knowledge that I have overcome the world. Be assured of this very thing that I, the Lord Jesus Christ, am the one that the prophets mentioned in Isaiah. I am the one that was sent to come to be a light to humanity. It is not in vain to trust him this morning. He's not intimidated by any disease not intimidated by anything that you can go through and I want us to just lift up our hands as we pray we are praying we are praying for those who are in distress in the name of Jesus we are praying on the believers who have lost heart the believers who are not seeing clearly and God is calling you this morning to recognize him see him in your moment see that he is Christ see that this is the mystery that has been revealed to us christ the hope of glory inside us living on the inside us christ has come he is the word that comes to give us life in matters where we do not understand and i even pray over people who have confusion about their salvation people who are not sure of what god has said i declare that in this year you will see the hand of god in the name of jesus you will see him walking with you you are going to hear god speaking to you which way to go in the name of jesus you are going to experience a supernatural encounter in this year in a time of uncertainty you're going to be assured of what god has told you in the name of jesus i even declare over people who are uncertain about their families people who are uncertain about their health people who are uncertain about their businesses people who are living in the disruption of times but will be assured of the hope that is in christ who is our sure hope christ the hope of glory this morning father god we send your word we send your word lord go over over our families 
we send your word over our communities father we send your word over our city of johannesburg we send your word over our country south africa we send your word over this continent of africa we send your word lord god over your body the church we send your word lord god to strengthen the feeble knees to remind your people lord god that truly you are a god who who performs his word you are a god who does miracles signs and wonders i thank you my god and my father that none of us will be intimidated by corona none of us will be intimidated by sickness lord god but i thank you lord god that we will see you as utiko osizungezile kaphambile emva we recognize you we welcome you we receive you we receive you you are the Christ the son of the living God amen and amen 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 hallelujah amen uh, we'd like to just encourage um, and, and anyone else who wants to contact us we are on, on Instagram we are on Facebook we are now even on YouTube we are where else are we we are on we have a whatsapp line as well and, and if you need to talk to someone if you want to if you want someone to maybe counsel you on a matter or stand with you in prayer please make sure that you contact um, all those you can check our um, what you call it our bios uh, there'll be more information there uh, and one more announcement we have something special prepared as well for the children because everyone has been caught up with the big people but we have something prepared for the children as well we'll be sending out on our Instagram and Facebook lesson 3 and lesson 4 of, of, of what the children have been doing in the Mighty Eagles ministry and therefore we invite the parents to take that PDF and, and, and sit down with their kids and have lessons uh, we are going to post a recording from one of our teachers as well who's going to explain the lessons and 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 we say happy happy learning of the word in your homes amen hallelujah okay we love you family stay safe stay in the lord stay prayerful oh yes one more one more announcement we are praying bazalwane every night every night and every morning six we are praying and every evening we are praying we are not coming together we are praying in our homes so every morning at six please uh, you can start at five but every morning o oasis church johannesburg is congregating uh virtually to pray every morning at six and at night at six so you can pick a time to pray and we are going to continue believing the word of god trusting god for healing trusting god to flatten the curve hallelujah we don't just want the, f the curve to be flattened we want it to actually decline in the name of jesus we are going to see people being healed faster people people being totally healed in the name of jesus and we're gonna see that percentage that was predicted being far less than it is in the name of jesus none of our people will contract a uh, corona in the name of jesus we pray amen and amen Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs.